What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, undefeated, unified, lightweight, world champion, superstar boxer, Tiafimo Lopez, he responds to undefeated WBC lightweight world champion, superstar boxer, Devin the Haney, Devin the Dream Haney, getting a unanimous decision victory over three division world champion, Hall of Famer, Jorge Linares via unanimous decision. And obviously, he uh, fa he faced adversity in the 10th round when he was clipped and badly hurt. But that said, Tiafimo Lopez, he responds. He puts up a, uh, uh, a post on his social media, and he says, Devin Haney is absolutely fooled. Uh, Tiafimo Lopez, 16 wins, no losses, no draws, 12 wins by way of knockout. Uh, he stands at 5'8", with a 69-inch arm reach. He's going to face his IBF mandatory challenger and undefeated Australian star boxer, uh, George Cambosis Jr. That's scheduled to take place June 19th in just a few short weeks. Tiafimo Lopez, he had a magnificent stretch of fights. He defeated Nakatani, and that win looks better and better every single uh, outing because Nakatani is looking great uh, in his last few fights. Uh, then he knocked out Richard Comey in dramatic fashion to win the IBF title. Then he dominated Olympic two-time gold medalist, three-division world champion, and unified lightweight world champion who was widely considered by many to be top two pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world in Vasil Hitek Lomachenko. He got a unanimous decision victory over Lomachenko to become unified, or some, may, some people may say he's undisputed. But we know the history of the, the WBC title that uh, Vasil Lomachenko fought Olympic gold medalist, British superstar title contender Luke Campbell, for the vacant WBC title that was vacated by four division world champion Mexican superstar boxer Mikey Garcia. He beat Luke Campbell. He then petitioned the WBC for a franchise belt in which the franchise belt, according to the WBC original rules, you cannot win or lose the franchise title. It is essentially an award. It is not an uh, official belt. He vacated the belt. Devin Haney was his mandatory challenger. And we know the rest is history. He lost to uh, Tiafimo Lopez, then the WBC switched the rules, allowed uh, Tiafimo Lopez to win the franchise belt uh, and become uh, essentially unofficially undisputed. Some people say he is, some people say he's not. With that said, this has been an ongoing uh, feud between Tiafimo Lopez and Devin Haney, and everybody wants to see the fight for official undisputed, so there is no doubt left. With that said, you know, uh, he says. That after this performance, he believes Devin Haney is fooled. He wanted to face uh, junior welterweight undisputed world champion Josh Taylor at 140, Tiafimo Lopez. But uh, Josh Taylor says that he needs to beat Devin Haney first. Uh, if he beats Devin Haney and officially becomes undisputed, then they could talk. Uh, he stated that, you know, uh, he is indeed, you know, looking to move up to welterweight, the full welterweight limit, and challenge the last undisputed junior welterweight world champion who is a three-division world champion and currently the WBO welterweight world champion and widely considered by many to be the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world in Terrence Bud Crawford. So Josh Taylor has plans to fight Terrence Crawford. So Tiafimo Lopez said that he set his sights on Devin Haney. Devin Haney, 26 wins, no losses, 15 wins by way of knockout. Uh, he has gotten a unanimous decision victory over Jorge Linares tonight. He is 22 years of age, standing five foot eight with a 71 inch arm reach. Okay, he's a pure boxer. Tiafimo Lopez style compared to Devin Haney style is completely different. Tiafimo Lopez is a boxer puncher that he could utilize the ring if he so chooses. Uh, he's he seems to be stronger than Devin Haney. You know, uh, he gets knockouts. You know, but he too, you know, uh, can face adversity. He faced adversity against uh, Nakatani, and then. He started to say he's not interested in fighting tall fighters. Uh, with that said, Devin Haney in this fight with Jorge Linares was clipped badly in the 10th round. And obviously, that is going to be the highlight of the fight. As in the 11th round, you know, uh, he was looking to recover. And he did so in the 12th round as well to make sure and secure a victory. Don't make a mistake. Uh, Tiafimo Lopez, like I said, he struggled with Nakatani. Some people thought... You know, uh, you know that Nakatani was on the verge of beating Tiafimo Lopez, but he weathered the storm. Uh, so, with that said, uh, he clearly dominated Richard Comey. Then he clearly dominated uh, Vasil Lomachenko, in my opinion. I thought he won the first seven rounds against Vasil Lomachenko, clearly. 
Uh, I thought Lomachenko won 8, 9, and 10. Uh, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And then I thought Teofimo Lopez clearly won round 12, which I thought he was on the verge of stopping uh, Vasil Lomachenko in that 12th round. Nonetheless, he got the unanimous decision. So this is the fight everybody wants to see. Uh, he has a fight coming up with George Cambosis Jr., as I stated. Uh, I'm expecting him to dominate George Cambosis Jr. Uh, again, he is only 23 years of age. So we're dealing with two superstars within the sport of boxing that are very, very young fighters. Uh, stylistically, I don't expect Devin Haney approach to be the same as he did with Jorge Linares. He stayed in the pocket against Jorge Linares because... Everybody was getting on Devin Haney for his last performance against Olympic gold medalist, three-division world champion, Yoriokis Gamboa. Uh, and he just clearly outboxed Gamboa rounds 1 through 12. Uh, he he stayed stay using his jab, boxed from the outside, utilized the ring, used his legs, uh, used his counterpunch ability, used his quickness, and he dominated Yoriokis Gamboa. And there were tons and tons of complaints as people started to say, well, you know, uh, he was running in the fight. So in this fight with Jorge Linares, who's a, a better fighter, than, in my opinion, than Yoriokis Gamboa, he stayed in the pocket. Uh, he still dominated the fight, rounds 1 through 10, in the pocket, right there in the pocket. I didn't give Jorge Linares a single round. Uh, and then in the 10th round, 5 seconds left in the 10th round, he made a great mistake. It was Jorge Linares was desperate, desperate through a 6-punch combination. The last punch, the right hand got in, clipped Devin Haney. His legs uh, buckled, you know, uh, he, he stumbled to the corner uh, and, and came back in the 11th round. He was still throwing combinations, landing uh, some uh, counter punches here and there, but he was doing it sparingly just to secure the victory and make sure he didn't get clipped again. And he did so in the 12th round. He did a lot of uh, holding and tying up just to secure a victory, okay? Uh, and he walked away with the unanimous decision victory. So, uh Obviously, that's what Teofimo Lopez is pointing to. Obviously, that's what all the fans are going to highlight, and they're going to tell, uh, say that Devin Haney was exposed, when simply that was not the case. He clearly outboxed Jorge Linares the first 10 rounds, uh, and even in the 10th round when he was buzzed, he made a mistake at the very end of the round. So, with that said, you know, uh, this is the fight that the fans want to see. Don't expect to see Teofimo Lopez standing in the pocket uh, with Devin Haney, or should I dare I say Devin Haney standing in the pocket with Teofimo Lopez? That's not going to be the case. He's going to utilize the rings, going to box. Uh, he's slick. You know, he's going to use his quickness, his quick feet. Uh, and that is ultimately what he's going to rely on in the fight with Teofimo Lopez. Now, Teofimo Lopez, he's going to apply pressure. He's going to look to look to land big punches. Obviously, he's going to feel like he can clip and hurt uh, Devin Haney after you know, what he did, what he saw tonight from Jorge Linares clipping him, you know. Uh, but again, like I always say, some of the greatest fighters in the history of the sport of boxing were clipped and hurt badly. We saw Muhammad Ali in his fight right before he fought Sonny Liston. Over when he fought uh, a, a fellow from the UK, we saw him get clipped and hurt and knocked, out, nearly knocked out badly in that fight. Okay, we saw... Floyd Mayweather clipped and hurt badly in, against Emmanuel Augustus and other fighters early in his career. Uh, we seen, we've seen we seen this movie before, okay? Uh, it's, it's not uh, um, rare to see this. When you're young uh, and you're this young, uh, most recently we saw Luke Campbell floor, and Luke Campbell's not a big puncher. We saw him floor uh, Ryan Garcia, okay? So it happens. Ryan Garcia got up, he stopped Luke Campbell. But it happens, okay? These things happen. You get clipped, you make a mistake, and you pay. We saw Floyd Miller, who's arguably the greatest defensive fighter in the history of the sport of boxing. We saw him clipped by a slow, flooding uh, Marcos Madonna in the end of the round where he tried to pull counter Marcos Madonna. Marcos Madonna timed him. He missed, and he caught Floyd, locked Floyd Mayweather legs up. Uh, sweat went flying. Some people said it was his tooth that came out. In the fight that Floyd Mayweather, again, was dominating. But you make a slight, subtle mistake, and this is the professional rankings, and when you step up to this level with former world champions and multi-division world champions, they'll make you pay for slight, subtle mistakes, and that's what took place here in this fight. But nonetheless, I'm expecting Teofimo Lopez to beat George Cambosis Jr., and then I want to see Teofimo Lopez versus Devin the Dream Haney. 50-50 fight, both great fighters. Very early in their prime. Let's see it. Let's make it happen.
So let's see how this unfolds and plays out. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV, all one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share these videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.